there we go. Now I think it's about that time where I unveil, I unveil your grace. You know, your grace. Do you know you know mm-hmm. your grace? You know because grace. you're coming to grace this, <laughs> this particular you. show and what you're doing yeah. in your own capacity. Um, I think that makes you a queen. Thank you. Yeah, because Aww. I don't think a lot of people will go out there. I think it's a very selfless thing you're doing yeah. to just make sure that everybody is well taken care of and yeah. they can, you know, continue to do what they have to do. Because through this journey, people get really discouraged. Yeah. And people always stop halfway. Yeah. But there is somebody encouraging us every day. And that is you, Fatima Mohammed. Thank you so much. I just, first, you know, I just at home you thank say you yeah i'm just so happy to be here and i want to say that it's such a an amazing feeling to just be alive to be healthy to be well because i know that there are people who we lost last year there's some people who have not made it through january so you being alive and being healthy and well means that you still have a reason to keep on going so i'm just i'm happy i'm happy to be here and thank you so much you actually look bright you thank tell us you. the secret <laughs> and a lot of guys like to say what is your secret mm-hmm. so we are glad that you're going to tell us a secret today Akuna ku, ku Liza Chinamaji. yes it is live and free information mm-hmm. here today True. now um in a bit i'm going to show you yeah that i went on the ground mm-hmm. you know sometimes they fear texting mm. but i went on the ground and you're going to hear what kenyans actually said when i asked them if they could subscribe to a vegan diet okay you know the faces they gave me like ah. they're like nyama choma haya how pork haya ribs. what's fried they're going to look like i know <laughs> how how I do know. you even imagine that <laughs> so that is in a bit but first just talk, talk talk to us about the wellness ke yeah. um the inspiration behind it okay yeah. well, I founded Wellness KE because I'm a fibroid survivor. So for about 10 years, I suffered from uterine fibroids. And this, I can say, wreaked havoc on my life. Um, And it was really traumatic because the pain was too much. And everything I was going through, going from hospital to hospital, just let me realize that, yes, doctors are there to help us, but they'll give you a certain percentage. And the other percentage, you have to find it and search for it through health and nutrition. And um, also because during my years of just suffering from fibroids, I was also diagnosed with uh, deep brain thrombosis, which is actually um, something that almost made me lose my life. So when I got to that place, I told myself, if I get better, if I'm okay, Mm -hmm. then there's a reason why I'm okay. I need to actually talk to people, tell them more about how they can take care of their health Mm -hmm. and everything that I gathered throughout that journey, I need to share with everybody else. So that's Mm -hmm. why I founded it. I think that's really beautiful. I was listening to your story, actually watching you talk about uh, when the doctor said that your fibroid was the size of a grape. Yeah. I mean, a grape is so tiny, yet it, it caused so much pain. Yeah, it did cause so much pain. And the fact that, you know, it started off as, uh, as tiny as a grape. But the problem is with fibroids, and many women out there need to know mm-hmm. this, is when, you have, when you're in your childbearing years, where you're still getting your menses, then that means the fibroids are still going to keep on growing and okay. increasing in number. So that's why immediately you find out you need to do something about that. Mm-hmm. So, but the, for my story, unfortunately, my doctor just told me, because my fibroids were asymptomatic, meaning I did not have extreme symptoms, okay. he was like, just continue living life, and then we'll see how it goes. And then that's when I ended up with so many fibroids and them being large and then ending up with the blood clot, which, you know, mm-hmm. at that time I felt it was a disaster. But now I can say it was a blessing. In oh, disguise. nice. Yeah. And I like when you say the doctor said, just go keep living life. Mm. And a lot of us Kenyans, yeah. you know, men and women are like, are living life. Yeah. But what is this living life? Because then I know for some people, life is nyamachoma yeah. and beer yeah. or uh, pork ribs and some pizza yeah. and less water because I prefer soda yes. and juice yeah. or wine uh, or, uh, you know, some actually like, is it mutura? Yes. So if that could be living life. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is that um, there's some people, I, I, I think in life, there are people who live and there are people who exist. Oh, okay. So if you don't take care of yourself, you're really counting the number of years, but there's no quality in the life you're living. In the sense that you could be waking up in the morning and doing the things that you've just mentioned. There's nothing wrong with that. But Mm -hmm. here's the thing. You're not necessarily bringing out the true quality of your life, meaning you're not taking care of yourself. I think of my body as a gift that God has given me. In the sense that if I come to you and I gift you something, 
let's say a car, mm-hmm. and then I just go away, and then I'm just watching you and seeing how you're taking care of it. That would tell me whether I can gift you something else. Because if you don't take care of what I gave you, then that, ne- that means that you're actually not going to take care of what else I'm going to give you. So God has given us this body, the physical body, mm. for us to take care of it so that he can keep blessing us with more. If we don't take care of it, then why do we even, why should we even be existing? I we like need that. To, we need to be living. So are you living or are you existing? Is ah, the question yeah. today. And we want to know today if you're living or if you're existing. Yeah. Fatma is here and she's very serious about this. When we come back, after we listen to what God said, on the word on the streets. We want to hear your excuses on not taking care of your physical well being. Mm-hmm. All right. Let us know also if you're dealing with this. Uh, maybe not like, hey, I'm dating, but Kunona too. Like, it's not working. <laughs> like, I'm not, I've, I've let go of these things, but Fatma, it's not working. Or I start going to the gym and my body hurts. It's even worse. Like, I could be hospitalized for actually just going to the gym. Or when I start jogging, I just lose my breath. Not that any COVID in Aniwa, but I'm just losing my breath. I'm jogging. It's not working. So Fatma, what do I do? What am I doing wrong? Is there extremes? Are there things I shouldn't do? But before you come up with these excuses that I'm helping you bring up, let's get to hear what on the streets on what people said when I asked them, number one, if they could deal with a vegan diet. <laughs> and number two, what they do with their physical well-being routine. We'll be right back. Uh, my name is Venia Ogango. I'm from the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. I pursue, I do gender and development studies uh, with psychology. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do, I have a physical routine of jogging every morning. And then after jogging for like 30 minutes every day, I come back to the house and do, uh, how do you call them, the aerobics. I do aerobics. So it's every day, but recently I got some injuries, so I had to like cut it off a little bit. Um, about my Valentine plans, I think I'll be spending it with my family because <laughs> uh, I have no one. Yeah, I have no one. And uh, if I would sub- subscribe to a vision diet, <sighs> maybe for like two weeks, because I love meat, <laughs> but I will, maybe. Okay, my name is Wingfield Nburu. I study economics in Kenyatta University, obviously. Uh, I have a 30 minutes work gym workout in the morning from 4 around to 4.30, where it helps me kickstart my day. It enables me to study very broadly. I will not subscribe to a, what is it, kick and fire diet, uh, because I think I don't eat that much, and I, I'm my, what, the diet that I have already is kind of kinda working for me, so I don't have any plans for a time, I'm single. And pay, it's not, it's not my priority. <laughs> my name is Chantel Longera. Uh, I study medicine. Um, my physical well-being routine is I play basketball and I'm a dancer. Well, ha, vegan. Me says I'm going to eat kula nyama because nyama is big. And my plans for Valentine's to not be like out, but when you make up, must be nice. Ni vizuri. Congrats. Community Chief in Command of the Africa Music Force, the Bad Boy, DJ, Dewezi. You know, I'm saying, I'm a cow, I'm a dog, and I'm a man. So, I'm a pig, I'm a dog. I will not subtract to a vegan diet because, like, nyama ni lazima, nyama choma, kwanza kuku, lazima. But if it's for a day, I'm a for some hours, I can do so. <laughs> then, uh, my f- for my physical well-being, Gym, Lazima, and then the morning run up Kidogo. We have a huge plans for Valentine's, but uh, I just seen what was street, so we are not doing Valentine's. We are doing Ogopa Nairobi edition. So if you are out there, connect to us and hang out. Ogopa Nairobi edition, it's on Valentine's. So that's my plan for Valentine's. It's a tables launch, just up with Rui Ruzitek. My name is Karen. I'm studying medicine. Mm-hmm. My physical well being routine is I cycle every day. Napenda ku ride bicycle by the way, that's my hobby. Mm-hmm. I walk around the school, kutoa stress za masomo, you know, medicine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Then I also play basketball, but I'm not a pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, my vegan, no, yes, yes, it is. Bila beef, I was it. 
Japan. For those who are dating on Valentine's, it's nice. See, see, to not be like out, could be nice. Okay, thank you. Well, there we have it, and I have to, you know, call this a wrap because the weather has not been in favor. It's been difficult, guys, running around. It's muddy. It was so difficult to find one or two people to just give me their minute or two. Um, besides that, yes, we hacked it. Well, there you have it. That was fun. Absolutely. I had fun with you all who, of course, came out to speak with me on the word on the streets. Thank you. A great shout out to all of you who participated and my camera person, Collins, my editors alike. Thank you so much. I'll give them a better shout out as I end this particular show. But I want you to look at my, um, you know, guest reaction. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I said I will not ask. I just want to hear her, her reaction straight on. Yeah, I'm in shock. I'm in shock because I feel like it's interesting how everyone feels like a vegan diet means you're, you, a vegan diet simply means you're not going to be eating meat. Nobody's talking about dairy or any other source of animal protein. They're only talking about meat. But that goes to show you um, that we're so used to it. We're so used to um, eating certain foods in a certain uh, diet because of how we were brought up. Actually, an interesting fact is that um, for years people thought that illnesses such as diabetes and and cancer mm -hmm. and high blood pressure they felt that these illnesses were actually hereditary like you would actually um, take them up uh, through medical history or through family members but right now they've discovered that it's actually systemic it's only because your great grandparents and everyone else before you used to eat certain foods so you ended up eating the same foods that they ate mm -hmm. so statistics confirm that you will probably end up with high blood pressure if okay. you have parents who have high blood pressure or uh, grandparents or great grandparents so it has nothing to do with your genes it's mm. actually because it's systemic and this is what you're used to so that's an interesting point and i always tell people when you think about your diet, don't think about what you're not going to eat. Okay. Because that's not how we view life, really. We're not talking about, if you have one thing, you're not saying, I don't have 10 other things. You talk, you're only supposed to focus on what you do have. And on a vegan diet, you're actually going to be able to eat more fruit, vegetables. You're actually going to be able to eat more nuts and seeds and plant protein. Okay. Now, we might not necessarily understand that because it all sounds so confusing. But this is actually what you need to eat as a human being for you to be healthy and to live a good quality of life. If you're going to eat your meat, but then you're also going to eat your fruit and vegetables, then I'm fine with it. Okay. But don't necessarily say, I have to eat my nyamachoma, but then you forget that you have to take care of your body through nutrition. Because remember, nutrition plays an 80% role in what your body is going to look like and how you're going to feel. All right. 80 is a big percentage. So the 20%, is it means you have to reduce stress, work out, wear waist trainer, whatever. That's 20%. But then the 80 means what you're going to put on your plate or what you want. So don't just think about what you won't be eating. Focus on what it is that you put in your body because your body is the only place you have to live. I can't just today say, I'm going to take this body and then I'm going to use yours. This is my home. I'm going to live in it until the end. You know. And I like when you're talking about 80% is yeah. what goes into your body yeah uh, we've watched some people i think two i think yeah. majority of them will talk about i do a workout for 30 minutes i yeah. do a workout for 30 minutes um this is is this the average i think uh, time i think this is what people feel is enough for them to actually just work out because okay. you have so much going on for instance they're in school they have to study they have to do so much and then there's life okay. so you're not necessarily going to dedicate an hour or two hours for you to just work out I feel like if you have 15 minutes, if you have 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever amount of time, use it. Okay. Because any physical activity is beneficial. No physical activity is dangerous for you. Remember, you're not just doing it so that you can look good. It's also so that you can feel good. And you can also make sure that you stay away from illnesses, mm. lifestyle diseases, which are affecting people now who are even younger. We have young people, teenagers, who are actually affected by diabetes. Mm. You know, So that's something that should shock us. means there's something in our system or in the way that we live and what we eat that's different from how people used to eat. Our environment like also plays a huge mm -hmm. role. So it's really important that we do that.
You know, I like that you have said it's not only about how you look. I yeah. do know I'm gonna put guys on the spotlight, yeah. men and women alike, because this is a gender space. Yeah. Men wait until they have kitambi. <laughs> this is true. No, 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 Kenyan men, and I know they're watching. They yeah. wait until you're like, hey, wait, I'm 30, I'm 31, yeah. and this thing is protruding. They're like, man, yeah. I'm subscribing to a gym. Yeah. I need to know that I need to work out because I. And, and do have everything at once. Yes, everything at once. Yeah. And I wanted to go down, gone. I know. Women, they wait until maybe childbirth mm. area uh, time or maybe mm. the baby father. They're like, hey, I need to work out. I need mm. to subscribe to this. So it's about how they look. Yeah. Now I want us to talk about doing this thing with that kind of discipline yeah. before you have to try and cut down your kitambi in a week. Mm. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are saying, well, like, I want to work out, but how do I do this? Yeah. Like maybe in a year. I just want to be consistent. It's yeah. a journey I want to go through but i need some expertise like wh how can somebody pull this hack it yeah? yeah so i would say the first thing you need to do is find out what it is that you like to do okay if you like dancing then just make sure that your physical activity is dancing mm -hmm. because that's <coughs> something that won't Excuse feel me. like a workout okay if you like taking walks then take walks if you like running whatever it is that you like then that's what you need to do something <coughs> else that works I would say is there's something I shared on um, on a different video if people are going to check out our YouTube channel sorry <laughs> um, um, so I think that for everyone out there who's trying to maintain their physical fitness the first thing you can do is think about the fact that when you start the year from January all the way to December what I like to tell people is you can actually divide the year into four quarters so a year has 12 months and Divide it into three, three, three months, meaning you have your January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, and then October, November, December. How you're going to ensure that you actually achieve your goals is through each quarter, try and work on one thing. For instance, during the first three months, try and work on your nutrition. Say that you're actually going to eat more fruit and vegetables and, and, and actually involve them in your first three months. And then in the second quarter, try and introduce some physical activity. If you're going to take more walks, if you're going to run, you're going to skip rope, or you decide to just take the stairs and come back down, whatever it is you're going to do, try and involve that in your second quarter. Right. In the third quarter, now you already have learned how to eat healthy and, and you've already started with your uh, fitness or with your physical activity. In the third one, try and take care of yourself, your mental space, meaning how are you going to ensure that you de-stress? Because we know that stress levels are actually one of the major reasons why so many people out there find it very difficult for them to actually lose weight. So try and take care of your mental space. Try and take care of your emotional health. This is very important. And in the last quarter, bring everything together and don't forget to commend yourself. I mean, I'm happy that you've even talked about the app, the flower app. Um, you can actually send yourself some flowers. It's not pathetic, okay? And you commend yourself and you say, I've tried to do this thing and I've I've gotten to the end of the year and now I'm happy because I've maintained, I've, I've trained, I've, um, I've seen progress. And something else that people need to remember is you don't need to be h too hard on yourself because life is already hard. Like, just think about it. You have to wake up in the morning and then mm. just move this body. Sometimes you have so much that you need to do that you don't even want to think about yes. it when life happens. So because of that, it's really, really important that you tell yourself, what do I really want to get out of this? Why am I doing this? Mm. Am I doing this because I want to be healthy enough so that I can run around with my kid? Or am mm. I doing this so that I can be healthy enough to be alive for my family members? Because I don't want them to, to suffer when I'm sure. not healthy. So find a reason that will make you wake up every morning and keep doing it. Like and that. interestingly, somebody actually mentioned that sh she was working out every single day yes. for 30 minutes yes. and jogging, the jogging and, then, and doing the yeah. aerobics. Um, and she said that she had some injuries. And the reason why she had some injuries is because she decided to do it every single day. Okay? She needs oh. to take some s some rest days. Okay. The same way you use your, your gadget, your phone, or your laptop, you, you give it some time when it overheats, and then you give it time to charge. Why won't you do the same thing for your body? You actually have to do that for your body. Give it time to rest, because rest is also recovery, and that's when you get to see progress when, you're, when you've been working out. So there are actually <coughs> times when it's too much. It's, yeah, it can be so too don't, much. So don't overdo don't it. Don't overdo it, because when you overdo it also, you're not always going to have the same cycle to do it every day. I mean, you True. would, yeah, you, you get somewhere where you'll be like, this thing now, 
it's been I don't know one month and I don't really feel like I'm going to do it. Now Fatma is speaking yeah. of psych. Yeah. A lot of guys say, you know what, I want to work out, but it's boring. <laughs> yeah, and now you've just said it could be a routine. Yeah. But then, how then do I make it fun? Because like you said, sometimes it's like goat. Yeah. How then do I revive it? How do I keep the workout fun? Okay, so I'll share what I do. Okay. The first thing is, I make sure that what I do is what I like. Okay. I like yoga. And I'm not the kind of person you'll find hiking or jumping or doing jumping jacks. I just, I know it's good for me, but I find something else that I like that's good for me. Yoga works for me because when I'm done, I've taken care of my spine, I've taken care of my body, and mentally I feel right, okay? So do something that you actually like. If you like dancing, play some music and dance. And you don't even have to do a single sit-up. That's mm. physical activity. Nice. Something else, ask somebody to hold you accountable. All right. If you have a sister or a family member or your partner or your friend, tell them, I'm doing this thing. Do you want us to do, to do it together? Or when I don't do it, can you actually just remind me that I'm supposed to be doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, so that mm -hmm. I can be able to just keep track. And people in your life who are going to motivate you to do this are going to actually help you in achieving your goals. Okay. Because in every <coughs> aspect of your life, you need somebody that's going to help you in terms of keeping track, keeping um, checking your progress, and making sure that you stay motivated. That helps in a very big way. Nice. Actually, yeah. that I think that is involving somebody else. Uh, yeah. That might work for me. Yeah. <coughs> because you always want some asking you, hey, wake up. Yeah. What's, what's up today? Yeah. Did and you do that? Is there thing? something you can do for your throat? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because so mine is acting up. <laughs> so you do <laughs> your <laughs> head <laughs> and make <laughs> sure <laughs> the blood flow is correct and mm. how you swallow your saliva <laughs> and all. But uh, let's just talk about, um, we've talked about how to just be consistent. Yeah. That is starting in the quarters, right? Yeah, yeah. And you've talked about making it fun. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, like you've talked about, it's not just about how you look. No, it's no, about no. what it does to your body. Yeah. And I want us to go and be a bit specific yeah. to what this does to the women yeah. and the men. Yeah. You know, I, I, about your fibroid story. And I do know that the, there's something about oestrogen. Yeah. And if this working out is going to help us now, in the matter of just health. Yeah. Now, the health uh, part of it. It does help because, let me just say this, with fibroids, you see, um, you actually end up having fibroids when you have a hormonal imbalance. Okay. So, for in my case, I had estrogen dominance, meaning my estrogen levels were higher than my progesterone levels. That's why you end up having fibroids or cysts or uh, endometriosis. Okay. So, there are these conditions that affect your reproductive health when your hormones are actually not balanced. Now, when you do um, visit maybe an endocrinologist and they get to show you your, your hormonal levels, you find out that there are things that actually um, get you to that place where your, your estrogen levels either spike or your progesterone okay. levels spike. One of them is stress. Okay. Okay. So it's important that you make sure that you reduce your stress levels. And exercise can help you in, in, in reducing your stress levels. Okay. Because especially if you wake up in the morning and, again, maybe you don't like how you look or you don't like your life situation, mm -hmm. majority of the times, so or 100%, after a workout, you always feel better. Because sure. mentally, you know you're doing something to, something good for mm -hmm. yourself. So you're happy with yourself. Again, as human beings, we are our biggest critics. So whenever we have not done the right thing for ourselves, we always talk to ourselves in a way that we would never talk to anybody else. True. We're like, <coughs> look at you now. You didn't even do that thing, and you know it's good for you and whatever. So you want to take care of that by making sure that you do as little as you can, even if it's going to be 15 minutes. Just okay. be consistent with it. Make sure that you like it. Make sure that when you're doing it today, you won't feel like you can't do it tomorrow. Okay. Because I think that's where people go wrong when they exert too much pressure on themselves, mm -hmm. um, and then they go and post it on social media. Today, oh, yeah. I'm oh. going vegan, and I am <coughs> going to get a six-pack. Yeah, six yeah, pack. yeah, yeah. Hiya. Everybody's like, hiya, you, where's your six-pack? What <laughs> have you been doing? And then it's like, why did I even tell these people? Because now I feel pressure, and I feel ashamed. So this social media aspect yeah. could also affect your workout? Of course. A lot of people are victim of this. You yeah. want to talk about this. Yeah, it's definitely going to, because you see, um, there's something that I, I've discovered. There's w what we call the inner enthusiasm and outer enthusiasm. Okay. When it comes to inner enthusiasm, this is what maybe I can wake up today and say, oh, I can't wait to just make sure that I take care of myself and I'm going to be healthy. I haven't told anybody about it. Now, research confirms that people who have <coughs> inner enthusiasm end up achieving their goals more than people who have outer enthusiasm, meaning they've told everybody. Because something happens when you tell someone your goal. You actually, like, your, your psych levels just yeah. go lower because you've already outlived that feeling of achievement. Yeah, but true. when you do keep it to yourself, it means that you've decided you're going to take care of yourself. 
you're, you're going to hold yourself accountable. You're working on it. Nobody knows about it. You have that mindset of, mm, just wait and see. I'm going to be one, two, three. Okay, so then that means whatever the case in your life, try and do that. Make sure that you don't necessarily put it out there because <coughs> people are going to have their influences. They're going to speak about whatever it is yeah, you put true. out there. And it's not their fault. You've put it out there and you've told them, I'm going to lose this weight. It's not our fault. Yeah. Clearly, if it's out there, <laughs> it's public, uh, how do you call this? Public uh, property. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah. We can, we can yeah. uh, react yeah. to you. However, however we want. However we want. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about Wellness KE yeah. because there's somebody who is so excited. Now they're enthusiastic about it. They want to keep tabs with you. Yeah. And they're asking, so now what is Wellness KE? Yeah. What does she do there? How do I get in touch? Yeah. But let's just talk about Wellness KE now. Let's get away from everything. We've given a lot of tips, guys. <laughs> now let's talk about Wellness KE. Awesome. Yeah? So Wellness KE is a platform that I founded so that we can be able to offer information and um, also services coming up to people who want to live a much better life. So meaning um, we're giving you uh, information so that you can be able to know how to take care of yourself from a wholesome point of uh -huh, view. Nice. Now, the thing about wellness is when, when you ask people, do you feel like you're well? They tell you, yeah. And when you ask them why, they say, because I'm not sick. I'm not going to the hospital, so I must be well. But really, wellness is really just that aspect of trying to find the balance between your physical wellness, your emotional wellness, your social wellness, environmental, nice. intellectual, spiritual, all these aspects actually play a role mm -hmm. in making sure that you live your life well so how are you taking care of yourself physically meaning your nutrition your fitness and all that how are you taking care of yourself em emotionally are you de-stressing are you making sure that you have you make good choices in terms of who your partner is in life are you do you have good people mm -hmm. in your life are you making good connections with people financially are you making sound decisions spiritually are you someone who's woke so to speak do you do you do you want to know about other people and do you care about them socially are you involving yourself in social activities or are you trying to do your best in giving uh, in terms of giving back True. in community right mm -hmm. so because when we live well and we follow all these aspects of wellness you actually are going to get to a place where you can s you can truly say that you're well okay. and that's what i really want for everyone out there when they get to interact with well the wellness ke platform yeah. so i really really want for people to also follow us on our social media platforms on instagram at well underscore neske and on facebook wellness ke on twitter at ke wellness and then on youtube also we have wellness ke the page so they can be able to follow us and reach out to us you can send us a message and tell us there are people who have actually sent messages um to say like they're trying to quit smoking the people oh, nice. who are trying to drink more water there's someone who um, actually messaged me and was really panicking about the pandemic and talking mm. about how it was how it was taking a toll on her mental health oh, nice and I feel like when people come out and talk about these things, I'm, I'm happy when I see that because it means that they're looking for, for a better life. And if they find my platform or our platform as a place where they can be able to get information and get the services and help, mm -hmm. then I'm more than happy to do it. That means I feel like I'm living my purpose. I actually want to commend you on that. Um, Thank you. For those who did not know, now you know <laughs> there is a platform to just get to um, <coughs> that information to make sure that your wellness is catered for. Now, there is something you're working on. Yeah. I, Anki, am personally battling with the vegan diet. <laughs> if I would try, I know there are people on the ground and I laughed at them, yeah. but I am, and I know one Ryan might be struggling with it. Yeah. I don't know yet, yeah. but I'm sure um, Karen Blessing, hi, good morning. She's always here on Monday. I don't know if she's trying it out, but girlfriend, we need to try this. <laughs> but you're working on a recipe book yes. that might help us. So if Karen is watching this morning, maybe she'll tell us on Monday yeah. um, if we're going to purchase this book. But yeah. let me know about this vegan recipe book you're working on. Yes, well, first of all, let me just say that a vegan diet is a diet. It's the only diet that has been proven to actually uh, reverse an illness a lifestyle illness wow. like a heart related illness so you really want um for yourself and also your family member if you care about your mom and they are hypertensive or they have high blood pressure then you need to try and make sure that you um convince them to try a vegan diet because again we we want to make sure that these recip these recipes um they are available okay um they are affordable and they're also going to be nutritional loaded with nutrition because again we're focusing on 
the benefit that comes from what you eat. It's not really about how much you're going to eat. Okay. It's what you're going to eat and what it's going to do for you. Right. And I completely understand when you say that it's, it's difficult for you. It was difficult for me too. Okay? okay, and it took me almost losing my life to say, okay, if I need to cut out, you know, um, red meat so that I don't end up having fibroids again, if I need to cut out dairy so that I can uh, lower my risk of uh, diabetes or, or heart related illnesses, then I need to do that because if I've spent years in hospitals, then I don't want to live that life again. Okay. But I'm, I come from a place of where I understand when somebody tells me it's difficult for them, I get. When you get to a place where you're shocked and you see doctors actually trying to do a lot for you, but then they can't save you, then you have to make a decision. But the reason why I really want this recipe book to help to, to help people is because mm -hmm. I don't want them to get to where I was. Okay. I really don't want you to get to a place where a doctor is deciding whether they are going to, I don't know, operate on you or they feel like you only have a few months or years to live. That's not how you should live. And if you can make a sacrifice and try, even if it's for one day, have a vegan day because my mom at her workplace, that's something that they've done. Mm -hmm. They've given themselves uh, a few days of the week where they have a vegan day. And a vegan day means you're not necessarily going to, don't think about the fact that you're not going to be eating meat. Think about what you will be eating. You'll be eating a lot of fresh foods. You'll be eating a lot of, um, even just rice and dengue is a vegan meal when you think about it. Everybody else has been vegan. So surprise, okay? On <laughs> some days is saying, <laughs> someone on the other end is yeah. saying chapo dondo. There you go. That, that's, that's a and vegan they like meal. it, right? And they love it. They love it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was a beautiful discussion. <laughs> I have loved to hear that it is not necessarily a torture mm. to subscribe to a vegan diet like yeah. we're all thinking, especially Kenyans. Yeah. Please subscribe and uh, check out the Wellness KE platform. Yeah. Engage with Fatma Mohammed and her team. And guys, let's let's cap these things that are coming with just living your mm. life. Now you said eighty percent is what you put inside yeah. of you. Yeah. Eat twenty percent. Yeah, I work out thirty minutes. Mm. It's good, mm. but that eighty percent is what we want to take care of. Exactly. And Fatma has also said. The, well, the wellness is also mentally. So yeah. your physical well-being yeah. and your mental is a direct connection. Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. And for making it so loud and clear that yeah. we should all make a sacrifice. Yeah, we need to. And I really want to thank you for giving me this platform because I feel like when it comes to us as human beings, when life happens and we have a lot that we're doing, it is possible that you might forget about mm. yourself, but always remember that you are alive for a reason. So because you're alive, it means you need to do your best to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, take care of the people you love, because at the end of the day, it's more about the quality of life and not the quantity. I like yeah. that, the quality of life. Yeah. I'll just stop it at that. Looking forward to hosting you again. Thank you so and much. And be sure that I'm on that wellness key awesome. each day. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually telling the whole team, if you're a WCW fan, let us be that team, eh? That we are that squad. Thank you. Yeah, yes. wellness squad yeah. <laughs> starting today. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you and so much. And I must say, yeah. well, Lord, well, what do you do with yourself? Mm. Oh my God, you look so good. Now they know. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> That's it for the lounge. Thank you so much for following. Give us your comments and your feedback on our social media platform.